this event, which we're using to celebrate Wall's CP Day. Um, I guess there's some network problems, and uh, it is to be expected with uh, for uh, service providers. But please bear with us, and uh, we'll continue as best as we can. As I said, today is World CP Day, and in the past we've had a lot of events. We've had um, very formal, um, what I call it. Um, either webinars or actual seminars and conferences where they brought a lot of experts to talk about cerebral palsy. And those who follow Benola and our events will know that we have been talking about cerebral palsy for well over um, 11 years now. And to the glory of God, many people have joined in one way or the other. And so while cerebral palsy was a total new idea to many in 2012-2013, um, a lot of inroads have been made. And so we today we're looking at something which is World CP Day itself. It is highly celebrated now, it, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. But I have this feeling that many people do not just understand the concept or where the idea came from. So I would like to just talk to us and start the journey from what cerebral palsy is. It is a congenital disorder of movement, muscle tone, or posture. It was discovered in 1853 by Dr. John Little, an individual who himself had symptoms of cerebral palsy, even though that name or that term was not known at that time. But having managed to get educated and qualify as a medical doctor, he decided to pursue the causes of what he himself had gone through and we, she obviously had seen other children going to. And after making a few uh, research findings, presenting research papers at major workshops and conferences, the condition was identified and it was named Little Disease or Little's Disease. And his concept at that time was that it was mainly due to complications at birth which led, of course, to oxygen starvation for children. A few years later, in 1887, another medical doctor, Dr. William Osler, after doing his own research, he wrote a book which kind of disagreed with Little's concept because he had found that not every child that is born with complications or that has delayed oxygen, um, access to oxygen, that actually ends up having cerebral palsy. And so he concluded that there must have been other things that happened in the womb that make these children that have CP a little bit weaker than the other. So a strong child, despite having a difficult delivery, or pass it to a disability, it's not like to have several person. And I guess this is what explains why some twins come out, one is fine and the other has several person, because the, fine, the twin that is fine is a stronger one and had been able to fight in the womb to get more uh, nutrients and, of course, oxygen. So it could withstand a little more stress at birth than the other one. Uh, Dr. Osler went ahead and wrote a book which he called The Cerebral Palsy of Children. Years later, a, a very famous, or still very famous, American 
psychiatrist called Dr. Sigmund Freud. And I believe many of you would know one thing about him. Um, came up with a much deeper argument of the fact that it has to be neurological and sort of issues. And it became not just issue of oxygen starvation, but more complex issues. And these studies continue to go on. Um, by 1950, a couple, medical couple, Dr. Leonard and Isabella Goldsonson, whose first daughter was born with cerebral palsy and died at the age of 29. So obviously had a long experience of personal experience of seeing and managing cerebral palsy. Um, they went on to found what is not, not kind of called the United Cerebral Palsy uh, Association, which has continued is one of the biggest organizations in America now on cerebral palsy. Knowledge on CP continued to spread all over the world. But after, um, one of the things also that had to be searched by Dr. Sigmund Freud and a few people found out was that cerebral palsy is not contagious. It is not infectious. And it cannot be passed on by genes or to uh, blood, so to speak. It's not hereditary. While these are very interesting findings, it is also um, this findings like this, particularly the fact that it is not contagious, uh, is damaging to a lot of conditions. Because to be able to do medical research, a lot of money is required. While government puts in some money, the bulk of the money for medical research comes from pharmaceutical companies who hope to benefit tremendously from whatever medications and treatment methods that are found. As a result, shortly after 1950, following what we you know, a long period, almost 80 years, of research into and well documented research into cerebral palsy. Funding for research dried up. By then, it had been established that the person with cerebral palsy will live with their cerebral palsy. They would really not harm or affect anybody else. And a lot of pressure had been put on government. And so, support for families with children with cerebral palsy have been reasonably well established. So in the developed world like America, most of Europe, Canada, and Australia, what you find is that you have a child with a condition like cerebral palsy. Medication is free, therapy is free, and even assistive devices, whether it's wheelchair, standing frames, and all that, are free. In fact, in some countries, a parent is identified as a primary caregiver. And so what you can do to get is funding in terms of support if the parent doesn't have to go to or is unable to go to work so that they can stay full time and take care of a child. Technically, this is good. But if you're a parent of a child living cerebral palsy, what you realize, especially if you see other children, you begin to notice that your child has a much, um, well, I say, you know, and has, has an ability to learn and possibly is not as affected as the other children, especially when you show them the love, when you spend a lot of time in their company so that you, you are able to watch, observe them and see their willingness to make to please you, their willingness to do some things, no matter how little. And so a movement started in America around 2004, headed by two mothers 
of children living with CP. One of them is Anna Maria Champion, and the other one is Cynthia Krishna Gray, who co-founded Reaching for the Stars, a foundation for, of hope for children with cerebral palsy. With a passion and a desperate desire to see that funding is returned to cerebral palsy research. You see, these parents had followed closely what was happening with autism, what was happening with Down syndrome, and a few other conditions. Even um, if you talk about the vision impairment, if you talk about um, you know learning a lot of learning disabilities. And so it was like, why is nothing being done? We must be able to do something. And you see, without funding of research, without encouraging those in the medical field to do more research into these things, we will not learn more about conditions at all. And so apart from funding this, uh, founding this organization, they started a campaign all over America and on social media to get other parents to sign in, just simple sign in the petition. And in fact, uh, by 20, I think it was by 2013 or so, they found Benola online and they actually invited us to sign a petition, which we did. And by the next year, 2014, it started with one state and then it went on to the United States Congress, where these two ladies were leading a team and so on, were able to make a presentation and the United States Congress passed a law which now made it possible for funding to be returned to, uh, made available for several policy research. The, initially it was like a month was put aside, which is March, as Cerebral Policy Awareness Month. But later on, Congress now approved 25th of March as Cerebral Policy Awareness Day. This is within the US, and maybe for a few people who were following Benoit, uh, who are following um, United Cerebral Policy and switching for the stars, Somehow, um, United Cerebral Palsy Australia had been formed years ago, and they also had been following what was going on. And a very interesting thing, which some of us also may not know, is that the World Health Organization has a day set aside for just about any condition that you can think of in this world, medical and otherwise. And so in the course of their own research at the United, um, United Cerebral Palsy of Australia, they were disturbed by the fact that United States, the United Nations did not have a day set aside for cerebral palsy. And so they, they came together with some people in a few countries. In fact, I think it was just total 35 organizations, including the US, to say, let's start an online campaign to see if we can get enough countries, enough people involved, and get the United Nations to do something about this anomaly of not recognizing CP as something that should be celebrated. Um, if you want to check it out, you can go to United Nations World Health Organization's page and check all the special dates. You'll find that some days you have five, six different events, activities being recognized. And on those days, United Nations will call out the world, they will make some major statements, they will come out with a theme for the year, and that becomes a campaign until the next year when uh, the days will be celebrated. But CP till date is not amongst this living conditions. Well, it started with calling out people, and because it was that, it was like it was done every first Wednesday 
of October. In fact, in 2013, 2014, and a few other years, we have had World CP Day on the 1st of October in Nigeria, which for happens to be Nigeria's Independence Day. And um, even if it, 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 so even if it fell on a weekday, it was possible to do a lot of activities because there was no work, right? And it became, but eventually we got to a stage where um, it was falling like on a Sunday and certain things. And by then, after about, by 2014, 2015, um, there was a lot of interaction by email, by Zoom, and so on, between myself and the desk officer at United Cerebral Palsy Africa, uh, Australia. And there were, there were, I was invited to grant an interview to uh, journalists in Australia, which Um, having a parent whose child was doing cerebral policy in Africa talking about the situation. But because I have a military background and because I, I have always believed that, you know, and running an NGO, being an advocate, is not about being confrontational. It's about getting details and putting down options of what could be done. You see, we can all carry our flags and go to Alausa or to Asorok and complain. We don't, they must do something for us. But the point is, what do we want them to do? We must be able to articulate them. We must be sure that there are things that can be attained or achieved. We must be able to build them into short-term, long-term, or even medium-term. That's when government or whoever we are agitating to will be able to say, okay, let's see what we can do. Of course, there's always the issue of costing and so on. So this idea as I continue to put to this um, interesting lady in Australia. And from there, it was decided that there should be competitions every year to get people involved. Then we moved on to setting up a committee of nine people from different parts of the world to run all CP Day. Uh, virtually, and uh, about three years ago, um, the lady left the organization or moved to another desk, and then it's been difficult to get somebody to do that. But if you follow the website, you'll see that there's been one campaign every year until we got to the present campaign, which is, um, you know, millions of reasons which we are using now for the third year, which um, just opens up opportunities for everybody to come up with some way of celebrating the own boss of today. As I speak to you today, the organization that had, or the movement that had just about 35 organizations in a few countries, now has over a thousand organizations in a hundred countries that are doing some activity today. For a long time, Benola was the only one doing Bossy Pete in Lagos. A few other organizations have joined in Nigeria and some parts, you know, Abuja, Potakot, Jaws, that I'm aware of. But, um, Unfortunately, we're not working together and there's no clear harmony as to what everybody's doing. And there has to be, um, at the end of the day, some kind of synergy in the efforts of the things that we're doing. Then um, in Africa, I think we just had about two organizations in South Africa and Australia. And, I mean, and, and, and Kenya, I can think. But now it's moved on. There are quite a few organizations. Um, Kenya is doing very well. And I was even invited in 2017 to be the keynote speaker at the World CP Day celebration um, 
one of the organizations in Accra, Ghana. And now there are even a number of unstable reserve reports in Ghana who are very active on social media telling their stories and generally trying to push the idea of all CP day. Where are we now in terms of moving forward? We need to be able to say, yes, we've done a lot of work. Yes, a lot of people in Nigeria. Um, a lot of parents, a lot of adults, and even if you therapists are talking about but there's still so much to be done. So much to be done. And everybody in their own special way has to begin to see what they can do about cerebral force. Statistics show us that well over 17 million people all over the world live with cerebral force. In Nigeria, we're talking about well over 700,000. And if I bring it closer to me in Lagos, we're looking at about 80,000 people living in several homes. In fact, the statistics available from the Nigerian Medical Association say that now there are over 100,000 children being born with cerebral palsy every year. Of course, some of them die at various stages, as we continue to see with some of our CP parents, mothers especially, who unfortunately from time to time tell us that they've lost their child with CP, even as, you know, as young as a year or two and as old as 15, 16. But the good news is that as I speak to you today, I personally know a lady a Benola ambassador who is 48 years old, who is a graduate, who is working as a teacher in a special school. I know a gentleman who is about 40 in his 40s with cerebral palsy, who is married to a lovely, beautiful lady who has two children. I know a beautiful lady in America, Nigeria, a lawyer, who graduated from Nigerian law school before moving to America. She has four handsome young men. I believe they're all graduates now. I know um, a number of ladies, even in Lagos, who are graduates. Some of them have masters, some are lawyers, some are bankers, and so on. I know a wonderful young man who um, he's blazing trails academically and he's studying a very, very interesting course that can only be done by a very, very brilliant person in a university. I know one who is now making trails as a comedian and being invited to, to perform at big shows. In Ghana, like I said, we have a lady who is um, an IT expert and she has a very big company and she's employing a lot of people. Um, I can just go on and on as to not what is happening with CP outside Africa, but what's happening with CP in Nigeria and around Africa as proof to all of us that that child living with cerebral palsy that is under our care has tremendous potentials. But if we don't start doing something very early in their life, which is where early intervention is all about, they will miss out and they will also miss out on those great potentials of what they could achieve. So what can we do? 
Remember I told you that the condition has no cure. It is lifelong. It is chronic. And there are sometimes what you call, uh, um, you know, add-on conditions. So a child could have cerebral palsy and be autistic, cerebral palsy, and have issues with vision or, or hearing, can have issues with attention, can even have issues with learning. The serious ones have issues with movement, where they cannot sit, they cannot walk, they cannot do this. In fact, a lot of those who we know that are above 30, who are walking and doing so many things, have confessed or have opened up to me in our conversations to the fact that they probably did not walk until they were 12 years old. And many of them have had multiple surgeries on their knees and their ankles and so on, which is why they are able to walk today. Sometimes with obvious uh, difficulties. But you see, because of the opportunities they were given, they were able to go to school, primary, secondary, universities, even the law school, hold their own, and so even the authorities in those schools didn't quite recognize that these children had cerebral palsy. But hopefully with the awareness that is out there now, more parents are doing that. I have one-on-one -on -one conversation over the years with well over 2,000 Nigerian parents, mostly women, some of them single mothers who have children in cerebral palsy. And I can tell you that the attitude is improving tremendously. Many of them now, even at the age of two, I mean, someone is telling me that a child of one and a half is already diagnosed with cerebral palsy. That gladdens my heart, not because the child has CP, but because they already know what it is. Because I've met parents, individuals who told me that at age 25, going to school, going to university, nobody knew that, that they had cerebral palsy or what they had was cerebral palsy. So we must celebrate these gains and we hope that as we continue to do more to um, raise awareness, it will help more parents to come out it will help more of us who are in a position to help, to help them, to push. You see, the push for an improved living condition for children with cerebral palsy or parents of children with cerebral palsy is not for the parents themselves or the adults. It is for all of us. Because in reality, I am yet to meet one individual who does not know somebody who is either affected by CP or who has a close relation with a cerebral palsy. That's to show you how widespread this situation is. Um, and the reason why I've given you some numbers, like 80,000 people in Lagos, the reason why you don't see them is that where the condition is serious, a lot of us are still not um, comfortable sharing our stories or going public with our stories, taking our children out in public, and so on. So I would say, what do we have to do or what can we do? Today is World CP Day. And my main purpose here is not to bore you with long talk, 
or to make you feel bad about a condition. It's actually to make you happy about the fact that people with CP are already contributing positively to our society. And they can do more if we create the environment for them to thrive. A lot of parents are doing so much now. And again, it is up to us to do, um, to play our part so that somehow we will make it easier for them to do what they can do. I think, for example, no matter how much government or private sector does to provide free healthcare or other services for these parents, if the community continues to be afraid of um, CP because of the way the child looks or because the child is drooling and so on, what will happen is that if a mother has to take public transport to go to this free healthcare center, after if the first negative experience from people who don't want to sit near her, people who are saying, driver, why did you allow this woman to come in with this child, etc., etc., she will go back home and she may never take that child out again. If a mother brings a child to, let's say, a family event, or even goes to the to a mall, and some people can say things like, "Oh, why did you bring this child here? Well, you have spoiled my day. We're here to have fun, not to see children now like this." Um, you've also messed her up seriously, and she won't go out with that child. So we need to do a lot of things. We need to get knowledge as to these conditions. We need to do what we can. Today is for CP Day. And one of the things you can do starting today is to wear green. And with that green, take pictures, post them generously on social media. If you don't even know what to say, just simply say, happy World CP Day. The truth is that a friend of yours or someone who is not aware is likely to ask you, what is what's it today? And that is an opportunity for you to open up and say one or two things. There's so many cerebral palsy organizations now and individuals who are trying to make something happen for themselves or for children in cerebral palsy. If you know any of them, make a donation. No matter how small it is, little droplets fill up the bucket and make an ocean. And make it a habit to remember these people or these organizations when you feel the spirit leads you to reach out. Spread the word in the best way you can. If you look at websites like that of Benola or our Instagram page, you'll see a lot of snippets and information like something which you can just repost or find a way to share. And we'll be contributing uh, a lot to several posts. If you're aware that there's several posts in thanks like the Zumba that we are organizing tomorrow in Lagos, or other people are organizing walks, or whatever it is that they're doing. Take time out to join and be part of the event. You'll be blessed with this. And also think about it. You know, one of the things that is not really common here, um, you see, when it comes to political parties, or, I don't know, a few other things. We are very good at raising funds, running around, uh, asking people to drop in some way. But we just don't have that spirit 
but we are yet to really develop that spirit of volunteering for NGOs and helping NGOs to raise money. And the way you raise money for an NGO is to just do something. It could be a walk, it could be a picnic, it could be a lunch, a dinner or something. And you add a little something on the field because you have told them we're using this event to raise money. And at the end of the day, the amount raised is now donated. And you know, you could actually organize 20 of your friends to put in, let's say, 100, I mean, like a 1,000 naira each. And at the end of the day, you being the organizer with one or two of them can go to the organization of your choice and uh, make a donation of 20,000. You see how easy it is? And then with the picture and everything, you can now show as evidence to your friends that the money was actually donated as you had planned. So let's think about it and let's begin to see how together, holding each other's hands, we can move forward. Starting from this was to be changed, touch lives, and add Happy Wednesday.